Hello and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today's video is something I like to call a quick concept because it's something that's super easy to explain and easy to master. Today's video is inspired by creator Amazing Phil. If you don't know who he is, he's one of YouTube's original content creators. He's been on the platform forever and he still makes content till this day. It is so good, he is so funny. Some of the best things come out of his mouth. Fish can yawn, cough, and even burp, but they don't cry. If there's any fish watching this, don't be afraid to show your emotions. Until I was about 13, I thought that seahorses were mythical creatures. It's pretty soft. It's like one of those anime body pillows. Not that I've... <laughs> ever owned one of those. But maybe this has the same purpose, but for people who are sexually attracted to carbs, like me. But one of the things that he has said that has bothered me was this. Fire is technically alive because it follows every single thing within science that living things do. No, this is definitely not true. It was a concept that some pseudoscientists came up with and was shared through a bunch of clickbaity articles, but it's not true and we're gonna talk about why. So his justification for fire being alive is it follows everything in science that living things do. When he's talking about this, he's talking about the characteristics of life. And basically the characteristics of life are some rules that scientists have come up with that said that it must follow these criteria for something to be living. Depending on where you get your information from, they will say there are somewhere between seven and 10 characteristics, but no matter what, it has to follow every single characteristic to be considered a living thing. Number one, first and foremost, it has to be made of cells. In fire, where are the cells? Where are these cells? There are no cells in fire. It does not matter if cells are plant cells or animal cells, but it has to be made of cells. It is the most basic principle that classifies living things, and I always thought it was common sense or just common knowledge, like the sky being blue, water being wet, George Lucas also hating Jar Jar Binks, but I guess it's not. Because fire is not made out of cells, it is not alive, and since it doesn't check off that one criteria, it doesn't follow any of the rest, but let's keep going. The second thing is that all alive organisms need to be able to move. Now, sometimes it's very clear, like when people are walking or when animals start to run, but all organisms move, even if we can't see it or it's a very, very slight change. The third thing is that all living organisms have to be able to reproduce. Now, this can happen either sexually or asexually, it doesn't matter which, but it has to happen if it is going to be a living thing. Fire spreads, but it doesn't technically reproduce, and even though it grows bigger, it's not reproducing in a sexual or asexual way. Which kind of brings us to the fourth thing of growth. All living things have to be able to grow, but there's a main component that makes fire exempt from this, and it's going back to cells. To be a living thing and to grow, you have to one, grow in size, which fire does, so check for that, but two, you also have to grow in the number of cells you have, which fire does not because there are no cells. The fifth characteristic under nutrition is where a lot of people get confused and start to use that as evidence of fire being alive. Basically, they're like, fire eats things, so it has to be alive, but that's not quite true. When scientists are talking about the nutrition of living things, they're meaning if it gets its energy in some way, shape, or form from proteins, carbohydrates, or fats. The next characteristic of living things has to do with sensitivity. When scientists talk about sensitivity, they're talking about two things that living things must be able to do. One, they must be able to sense changes in their environment, and two, they must be able to respond to these changes. And sometimes the changes are referred to as stimuli. These changes can include things like amount of light, temperature, pH, it doesn't matter, as long as the organism, the plant or animal, can sense it and then respond to it to adapt to make change so it doesn't die out. The next characteristic is called respiration. Respiration is just a fancy word for releasing energy from food in all of the cells. Because there are no cells, there is no respiration that occurs in fire, so therefore it can't be a living thing. And then the last one is excretion, which is just pushing out toxins and wasted material from an organism. What does fire excrete? Uh, smoke. <laughs> smoke. Now he said that fire excretes smoke but does it? Smoke is more of a byproduct that comes off fire and it's not an excretion that's happening pushing it out of some sort of body or organism. So it does not classify it as a living thing in that way either. So looking at a checklist, we can see that fire does not make the cut for the classification of living things. It isn't made of plant or animal cells, which is the biggest thing that it should be able to fulfill. It can't recognize and sense stimuli in the environment or any sort of change. It doesn't reproduce sexually 
sexually or asexually. It does grow, but it only gets half credit for that one because it doesn't increase in the number of cells. It only increases in size. It doesn't quite move in the same way. It just kind of spreads. It doesn't go through respiration. It does not excrete toxic materials from a body or a host. And last but not least, it doesn't get its energy from protein, carbohydrates, and fats like living organisms do. So if you're ever trying to figure out if something is living or non-living, ask yourself those questions to see if it follows the criteria of something living or if it falls short. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed this quick concept. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Here are some of my other videos that I have posted and I will see you again next week.